Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know I haven't been around for a little while now, but I can explain, okay? I've had a major, major life event happen over the past six months, and today I'm gonna sit down and chat with you about everything that's been happening. So the major life event that has happened in my existence is that I had weight loss surgery. I had vertical sleeve gastrectomy, in short it's called gastric sleeve. And there, there are many reasons as to why I decided to have weight loss surgery. Now I've been struggling with my weight for basically my entire life. And at first, well, initially in your childhood, you're just perceived as the chunky kid or the chubby one amongst your siblings or friends. But over time, you realize the weight thing is a problem or that um, even when you work out and eat well or do what other people recommend that you do, the weight just doesn't come off. And that's kind of been me my entire life. But I was very comfortable in my body. I was comfortable in my weight. I didn't feel like I was much bigger than my siblings, for example, who are the main people that are normally around me. Um, but fast forward to post-COVID, which was 2021, I think this is where I started gaining the most amount of weight in shorter spans of time. So initially, I would always like around 80 85 kgs nothing more than that but over the 2021 to 2023 period i skyrocketed all the way up to 103.5 kgs so as you can imagine that is a huge huge amount of weight to gain in a very short amount of time and just to give you reference i am 159 centimeters tall so i have a very short frame to be carrying around so much weight and this started affecting me physically obviously i would have problems with swelling so my circulation so I'd swell in my feet and my hands especially when it's hot or every morning when I get up in the morning, I know that as soon as my feet touch the ground, they're painful. But there are many other um, occurrences that happened with regards to my health as a result to the weight gain. And one of this was insulin resistance. So how I found out that I had insulin resistance was because I was exploring different avenues to try and help me lose the weight. I had had multiple trainers for long periods of time, but the most amount of weight that I would lose in about a year would be about four to five kgs. And if you're working out eating well or eating what you think is a good healthy um, diet and not losing the weight it gets quite frustrating so I have also tried multiple eating diets eating plans and I ended up resorting to going to a nutritionist because now I was realizing okay I'm doing so many different things and nothing is working I need someone to find out what's really happening with me internally and this is how I found out that I was insulin resistant and pre-diabetic. So in a nutshell, insulin resistance means that whatever carbs that you intake, your body stores it as opposed to using what it needs and getting rid of whatever nutrients that it doesn't need. My cells dysfunction by storing everything and so when I do intake like leafy greens or whatever, but vegetables or whatever thing that I has nutrients that I need, I'm not able to make room to actually like keep that and get rid of what I don't need, if that makes sense. So when I found out that I was insulin resistant, 
I then got on to certain medications and whatnot to help with the insulin resistance. But then that's when I really made the decision to have gastric sleeve surgery or rather take a route that was a bit more uh, aggressive in losing the weight because I couldn't imagine myself also getting higher than 103.5 kgs. That would just be, I just, yeah. But outside of the health aspects of deciding to get weight loss surgery, there was also the lifestyle element to it. Now I'm a content creator. I work in the entertainment space. And so that means that I'm always, um, my life or career is always in front of people. I'm also, I also have a makeup brand called Quick Face. And so when I'm doing things like masterclasses or doing tutorials online, there is a huge part of me that needs to be confident in myself before I'm able to present myself or whatever it is I'm talking about to other people. And I could feel that slowly chipping away and I could feel myself getting into a depressive state because I would say no to going to certain events mostly because I would think to myself oh I don't feel confident right now I don't feel like there was anything that I could wear that would make me look good and even if there were events that I wanted to go to then I'd go to the stores like looking for stuff to wear and I wouldn't be able to find anything off the shelves that actually fit so my lifestyle was just like completely changing i was basically hiding away and that's not life you know especially after coming out of a pandemic it's not the type of life that i had envisioned for myself i wanted to be more out there to be exploring more to be more confident in myself to just living life because we know what it means to not be able to do anything that our hearts desire okay so for the sake of not making this video too long i want to then now dive straight into the procedure how i went about it who i contacted how much it was and the healing time so i did my weight loss surgery my gastric sleeve surgery through a uh, company called the clinique and i'll link their details in the description box below but i specifically went through the clinique because i had seen them um post about weight loss surgery and then i went onto their website that spoke uh, more in detail about their bariatric surgeries and what they offer now i decided to do gastric sleeve surgery because it doesn't change the anatomy of your intestine or your insides essentially could have done um the balloon but i believe the balloon can only and then after that, when I did my research, I realized a lot of people that had done the balloon had had weight gain after removing it after that 12 month period. So I wanted something that was guaranteed long term, a lifestyle, a rest of my life type of situation. So when I then approached the clinic, I told them that I wanted to, what my problem areas were and the initial um, surgical plan was for me to do liposuction and um, but when thinking about this decision to do liposuction I realized that it wouldn't fix what the main problem was which was overall weight gain liposuction as you know if you've done the research on it targets specific areas and it removes fats in those areas but if your lifestyle doesn't change you can gain weight back and gain even more weight in the areas where you haven't had liposuction they then did a consultation with me where um, the doctor was on the call and whatever questions I have because they're based in Turkey and I'm based in South Africa whatever questions I have this is the opportunity for me to then ask those questions and so me being me if I decide that I want to do something I get super invested in doing the research for it and I suggest that if you are looking into doing a similar surgery uh, or any other surgery that you do the research for it so me being me i had a ton of questions that um, i had for the doctor especially lifestyle changes because if you're gonna do anything to your body you want to know or you want to be mentally prepared for how that can 
change your life going forward and for me the lifestyle changes were not big enough for me to reconsider doing the surgery. One of those lifestyle changes was alcohol consumption and I'm not a big drinker anyway so not being able to drink a ton of alcohol didn't really affect my decision to um, have gastric sleeve surgery. Okay so then with regards to uh, the cost of the procedure this was after I had had the consultation. So the total cost of the procedure in rands was about 60,000 rands. And I think that amounts to about 3,000 something euros. Uh, but I had to put down a deposit of around 300 euros. And considering how small the deposit was, it made me even more comfortable. And this was around three, four months before the actual surgery. And the flights were around 40, 50,000 Rand from South Africa to Turkey. Obviously this is dependent on how you prefer to fly. So then the surgery date was set and it was then up to me to make sure that I did everything possible to prep myself. Obviously I listened to a ton of other videos and and podcasts of people that have had weight loss surgery and specifically gastric sleeve surgery to see what their journey was like post-surgery because some things you find out through other people's lived experiences and this was a huge case in my regard as well now a huge part of preparation for your surgery is preparing your family and friends um, for post-surgery and what that means. With my group of friends, um, hanging out together is normally lunches. And as much as we still do that, they had to understand that that would look slightly different for me. Um, so going to lunch right now, I could have a couple of starters, not a couple, that's actually forcing it. I could have a starter and I would be full for the rest of the lunch. And for the first six months post-surgery, you can't have alcohol. Your alcohol consumption post-surgery looks completely different to what your life was before surgery. So I went on a bit of a binge and partied my life away before months before my surgery so that I get it out of my system. So for me, my family's condition to me during the surgery was ensuring that my mental health post-surgery was taken care of so therapy was a condition for my family but obviously it's up to your family how they feel that they can best support you the most important thing is that there's someone there that you have a group of people that can support you and that understand your situation or that have done the research on their own to try and understand your situation so I'm very grateful for my group of friends and family that took it upon themselves to do the research on their own and find out more about what's happening with me and what I've decided to do. So another part of my travel journey to Turkey for my gastric sleeve surgery was that I went alone and this is not advised, this is not something that I had planned to do but I was in a relationship at the time and well in at the time of me planning for the surgery and I realized that my partner would not be able to support me in the way that I needed support. So obviously he had to go, okay. <laughs> um, but my sister had volunteered to travel with me. Unfortunately, she couldn't because uh, by the time I had surgery, she was about seven months pregnant. So yeah, I had to do it on my own. I had to put on my big girl panties and just get it done. But I've never been someone that's been afraid to jump in the deep end on my own if necessary. And this is one of those situations. So going to have my surgery, obviously do the travel and I'm super, super um, nervous. But the day after I arrived, we did a ton of tests. I actually, they did so many tests that they even found that I had 
a heart like tremor which i've been going to doctors in south africa my entire life and no one has ever found that i have a heart tremor but that goes to show you the extent to which they um, ensure that you're in good health prior to surgery but the tremor was um, so small that they accounted it to physiology and so i was able to continue to um, have my surgery which was a success i spent a couple of days in turkey post-surgery i'd say about a week um, in totality and of that week I spent about four days at the hospital and those four days post-surgery are the most brutal you're waking up post-surgery and you're completely disorientated you have no idea what's happening it just feels like a sharp pain has hit you in the gut and there's nothing that you can do about it um, but there's a huge support staff that's there for you constantly checking on you making sure you're okay and the pain management was also good as well so at least you even though you had had surgery um i was comforted by the fact that they were managing the pain as best as they could post-surgery they also encourage you to walk a lot so the doctor well my doctor specifically wanted me to walk every hour which i thought to myself this lady is crazy they just cut me open there's no way that i can walk every hour but whenever i could walk i did and the walking really helps you uh, heal faster and get back to yourself faster i'd say the total amount of time that it took for me to really get back to myself and this is including traveling back to South Africa and spending a couple of days here post-surgery. I would say it was about two weeks fully for me to be able to get back to work. Okay, so you guys are probably wondering uh, with regards to the lifestyle changes, aside from the alcohol, what are the lifestyle changes to expect? And the main thing is the type of foods that you're eating post-surgery. Now, you can't have carbonated um, cold drinks or whatever drinks for the rest of your life post-surgery bread you also can't have because these are things that expand your stomach so you don't want anything that's going to expand your pouch post-surgery because that could mean weight gain uh, weight gain and um, weight gain is definitely possible post-surgery especially after you've healed and you get a bit more comfortable with like pushing the boundaries and people have had to be repouched but i told myself when i went in to get my surgery that i would do everything possible to ensure that my lifestyle does change in preparation for the surgery now pre-surgery with regards to diet you need to start cut cutting carbs from your diet and have a very restricted calorie intake this is basically to train your body or your stomach for what's to come because the amount of calories that you're able to intake post-surgery is drastically drastically different from what you were able to eat before so then post-surgery initially you're only able to eat or drink clear liquid um, and this is like broth or like sugar water in the hospital i ha i had what they called composte which was basically sugar water there was nothing and it wasn't it was like water was sugared because they had put like pears in it and made it like made the pears sit in the water a bit but nothing more than that for the first like 48 hours and guys when i say i was hungry i was starving i could have eaten like a full cow raw that's how starving i was i was so hungry and then after like the third day then they started giving me um a thicker broth which really really helped me i had also gone to the hospital with gaviscon and i had the worst heartburn that i've ever experienced in my life like my entire existence now mind you i already suffered from gastric reflux so i expected to have some sort of like gastric reflux post-surgery but i didn't expect it to be as intense as it was so i'm so happy that i had that gaviscon but um yeah so post-surgery there was like a lot of change with regards to the type of food that i can have 
once i got to south africa i was on the broth in turkey until i came back and once i got to south africa i was still on the liquid diet i think the liquid diet lasts for about two weeks two to three weeks and um Honestly, even if you were to try and have anything a little heavier, your stomach just wouldn't be able to have it. And you have the, the clear broth or the uh, liquid diets like your soups or whatever in s really slow like spoons of it. Then slowly you start introducing like solids like egg or uh, potato or whatever mashed up with your food but you're basically eating as though you're a brand new baby that's learning how to eat for the first time because essentially that's what your stomach is 80 percent of your stomach has been cut away and that two percent has to now be able to sustain you and be able to intake or your vitamins and whatnot from the food from the little food that you are able to eat and sustain you so yeah that is what i've been dealing with for the past couple of months um it really takes a long time to get to a point where you feel really comfortable in what you're eating especially if you're out there have been a lot of food aversions for me and the main thing has been meat red meat chicken the only thing that i'm really able to eat is fish because it's much softer but anything that is hard and dry i'm not able to eat comfortably and this was a huge lifestyle change for me because the main thing that i loved eating before was meat if food didn't have meat i didn't want to have it so now my body naturally gravitates towards vegetables and you know softer proteins which is great because your body does need protein the most so that your hair doesn't shed so that you're just overall healthier okay so just to take you guys through a rough idea of what i eat in a day i generally wake up drink a glass of water I try to have as much water as I can. They really encourage this to help you with your weight loss as well. So I generally start off with a glass of water and I generally have a bottle of water. I use like these water supplement things because I struggle with drinking water. So that helps me with changing the flavor of the water uh, without adding calories to my water. So that really helps or I'll add like fruits to the water. Then for breakfast, I'll generally have like a fruit i like apples now i like all the citrusy tropical fruits so like maybe i could have a mango a peach a plum a nectarine you really over time figure out what it is that you're comfortable eating what fills you up then lunch time is where i have my heaviest meal which is um generally a salad i know it doesn't sound exciting does it <laughs> But I'll have a salad. Generally, the salad will have like couscous or bulgur wheat or whatever, anything a bit heavier so that it does sustain me for a bit longer. And generally, the salad is not a huge portion either. Um, in between, I'll snack, but I don't snack much. And if I'm snacking, I'm probably having like nuts. And that's only now. Before, I wouldn't be able to eat. I wouldn't be able to take on a snack. The most I'd do is like a couple of spoons of yogurt um, but now i'm able to like at least snack on like a bowl tongue or snack on like nuts in between my meals and then in the evening i really just let my body guide me as to what it feels like it needs if i feel like i need red meat um, then i'll have red meat it just has to be cooked like medium rare or i'll have soup in the evening i try to change up my soups but really over time you get tired of having the soups as well so this has presented to me an opportunity an opportunity for me to really explore foods and explore like different combination of foods to see what it is that i like what i realized was super super filling for me was having an avocado and i wouldn't even be able to have a full avo i'd only be able to have like half an avo and i'd pass out like i've had christmas lunch like that just goes to show you just how different your way of eating your culture of eating becomes post-surgery then post-surgery they give you an amount of time that you have to lapse before you're able to start working out and this is six weeks but 
I haven't started working out for several reasons. I just don't feel ready to. And in my mind, I can only do one thing at a time. And so as I figure out the food situation and I'm losing weight drastically, um, is then where I'll then, once I've figured this out, then I can move on to um, the gym part of it. I do keep very active because of work. I have an interior design company and so that keeps me super, super active. I'm up and down and my energy level has completely drastically changed. I would get so tired. I live in a two bedroom loft apartment. I would get so tired to just go upstairs that I wouldn't go upstairs for like a week before surgery. Um, but now, like going upstairs is nothing. I just, I feel I have a new zest for life. I have so much energy. I want to be out and about. I want to be in front of people. And that's just the lifestyle change of it. Feeling lighter has been the most rewarding thing of it all. Way more than even just losing the weight itself. So I'm sure you're probably wondering how much weight I have lost. I started off at... 103.5 kgs and we'll put that in pounds as well and i am currently at drum roll please <laughs> i'm currently at 75.6 kgs which is about 28.2 kgs down and that is a massive massive amount of weight to lose in such a small amount of time now i had my surgery on the 20th of june 2023 all the lifestyle changes that come with losing weight has been have been incredible being able to fit into whatever it is that i want to wear being confident again being comfortable in my own skin having the extra energy being able to chase after my nephews and play with them and lift them and toss them into the air just without running out of breath has just been the most rewarding thing ever and i would not change this decision for any anything else it's been incredible and i wouldn't change it for anything and i was meant to walk this journey i was meant to have gastric sleeve surgery so that i talk about it and other people are exposed to it as well i also live in a country south africa um, where there's a lot of criticism where it comes to weight loss weight loss and how you're losing your weight or surgery in its completion you know so either way there were going to be naysayers but the feedback from social media from online has been incredible and i'm so so grateful for the support okay so another question that i often get with regards to my weight loss surgery is why i decided to have it in turkey and not south africa now there's several reasons the first is that i felt more comfortable going to a place where i know someone that had had weight loss surgery there as well as other surgeries and i don't know i didn't at the time know anyone that had had weight loss surgery in south africa to be honest i still don't i've just seen people online but two was in terms of costs the cost in south africa is almost double what the cost is in surgery so from a cost perspective it was more affordable to do it in in turkey so all roads pointed to turkey for me and i'm super happy with the decision the costings that i actually mentioned earlier in the video were also including transfers as well and you also have a dedicated interpreter or rather someone that is responsible for you. So whether they're getting your medication, they're checking you in, they're communicating with the doctors or the nurses, if there's any communication barrier, they're there to make sure that um, the entire journey for you or the entire trip is comfortable and seamless. Then the other question that I get a lot of is with regards to loose skin. Now, I know a lot of people struggle with loose skin after losing a lot of weight in a short amount of time, but I've been super lucky and blessed to not um, have problems with loose skin. My body is kind of just like popped back and I haven't even started working out so I really think that once I start working out and toning even more that yeah 
even though I'm a little soft in certain areas, like between my inner thighs, tummy area, um, once I start working out, I'm sure that that will yank back into place as well. So I haven't really had problems with loose skin, but if I were to have problems with loose skin, I don't see a problem with going back to have like surgery for that loose skin like a tummy tuck if necessary i really don't judge people that decide to do what's best for them um with regards to surgery whether it's a bbl or liposuction or you're doing your boobs or whatever it may be if you can afford it if you have the support and um, you feel like that's what's best for you then i don't see a problem with that i think that really wraps up all the questions or a summary of all the questions um, that you guys have had on my social media if you have any other questions please leave them in the dis uh, in the comments below and i'll try to respond to you as many as possible they do get repeated a lot so if you if i haven't answered your question specifically then i've probably answered it through someone else i hope this talk and this chit chat has been informative and useful for you guys um i think i'm gonna check in every six months just so there's not a ton of weight loss surgery content if you do want specific type of content then comment down below as well and let me know what that content is and if i feel like it's aligned then i will definitely work hard to make that happen for you guys but for now i will see you in the next one